I'm going to keep this comedy going. I work with all these comics. A lot of them are up and coming. Several of them are going to be performing at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle on uh, Tuesday night. Your next guy is your average white guy and very funny, Jim McGowan. Give it up for Jim. All right, do it up. You built the shark, folks. Come on. tonight. I'm uh, Ron and uh, Shishi busting their tail and the whole staff here. Give it up for them. Come on. This is great being out here. I love it. It is good to be out. I'll tell you that. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I got my vaccine so I am safe from the virus. <laughs> Not COVID. No, no. Herpes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's hereditary, but looking at my dad over here, I don't want to take any chances. So. By the way, Dad, 88 next week, Kareem Warbat. All right, all right, let's go do that again. Fought in a war, son doing this here in Redford, so. Fought the good fight, Dad. Worth it. So, like Bill said, I am the most average white guy, uh, middle-aged white guy you'll know, that's for sure. I am uh, average up here. Where are the women at tonight? Let's hear the women. Uh, that's right. Inches and inches of average up here for you. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I could have the most average time of your life with this guy. It's true. I can give the most average orgasm ever. You screaming things like, oh, I kind of felt good. <laughs> I was almost there. <laughs> oh man, it is good to be here. I, uh, but sorry, ladies, I am married. I've been married for 30 years now. <laughs> kind of sounds like a prison term, doesn't it? 30 years. <laughs> 30 years, a hard time on the rock. That's what I know. Playground, you know. My Shawshank Redemption. Really, it's, uh, uh, no, I do actually love being married. I just hate the sleeping arrangement. I uh, long for the days of Lucy and Ricky and Fred and Wilma in separate beds, right? After 30 years of marriage, everything kind of sags to the middle, including the bed. It's, uh, The other night, you ever do this in the middle of the night? You, you roll into that little saggy part face to face with your partner. That happened to me the other night. It was just This is what I woke up to. Miss Sunshine turned into Captain Nasal sometime in the middle of the night. Well, what happened there? She gets mad at me in the morning, though. It's uh, not because of that. No, no, because her side of the bed every morning looks like something out of a fairy tale, right? Everything tucked in nicely. Little birds flying around. Butterflies floating by. Rainbow cascading over her side of the bed. Not my side. My side looks like a criminal would seem it's something from Law and Order Special Victims Unit over here. It's my alarm clock actually, just a boom boom chicka wow. What happened in the middle of the night? There is a crime scene. There's some, I don't know, hair samples over here. You got some sort of yellowy cholesterol mix. I, I don't know what that is. DNA all over the place. <laughs> I don't even make my bed in the morning. I just wrap yellow police tape around it and off I go. Yeah, she says I got issues. I do. I, uh, she says I'm, uh, I got retentive behavior, right? It's, uh, it's a new thing, I guess, that, uh, that I have. And I, and I agree. I, I probably like things the way they are, tidied up and everything. I wouldn't say that I'm, I think I'm average yet. I'm average retentive. I'm not anal retentive. I'd like to be anal someday. <laughs> Honey? Yeah, I gotta stay healthy though. I got uh, I got two daughters, 26 and 24. Yeah. 
That's their uh, names. I, uh, 26 is 10 and 24 is 8. It's confusing, that birthday part. I, do, I, I love my daughters. You, you got to be there for these kids, right? You know? You got your at school activities, you got your after school activities, you got your counseling, your rehab, your parole hearings. You got to be there for these kids. And I am. I, half the time I didn't know what sport they were playing, actually. I didn't know what season it was, though. It's always fundraising season in the sports. <laughs> Holy crap, right? It's always fundraising season, especially around the holidays with these kids, right? You got, uh, you got these, these guys bringing in stuff in my office, pamphlets of stuff they're peddling for little Betsy on the, uh, the, the pom-pom team or whatever. And they like to put the picture of the kid right on the, the, the pamphlet of all the stuff they're trying to... It's always the ugliest kid you ever saw. <laughs> like, what's this fundraising for? Masks? Because, uh, plastic surgery? Because I'm willing to chip in here a little bit, you know? Oh, these kids. Yeah, and then around the holidays, it's, it's really bad. They're selling things like wrapping paper and chocolates and, and, and all these different things that they're trying to sell you. One guy tried to sell me a $14 bag of nuts. I said, I got a sack of nuts for you. Yeah, twice as salty and half the cost. I'll tell you that. For the holidays, I'll paint them up green and red. I don't care. <laughs> oh, I do love uh, love the kids, though, and then the fundraising. But uh, you know what? Where's the... Uh, I, I think I smell it in the room, actually. The, the cholesterol smell, the, the blood pressure. Where's the 40 and over crowd? You guys here? Yeah, some joint replacements. I can feel it in here. Oh, I did love... Uh, Love growing up in the 70s. That was uh, that was good times, right? I, nothing worked. Nothing was safe, and everything. No one had money for anything, really. So uh, I, I did. Uh, I loved. Uh, we made it here tonight. 40 and over crowd. Let's hear it one more time. Didn't have to use GPS or anything, right? Yeah, this guy knows what I'm talking about. We followed the guy like Dad used to. You'd follow the guy in front of you because he looks like he knows where he's going. That's uh, how you got to places. If you're going somewhere unfamiliar, you had to call two weeks ahead to AAA to get the trip take, right? Those were the days. Yeah, this guy's still paying with traveler's checks right here. So. It was fun times, though, in the in the seventies, right? I mean, uh, it, I didn't notice there was nothing safe about it, and uh, we, we didn't have money. I, I don't want to brag, but we had two TVs in our house. Yeah? We had a the console TV that would take up half the living room. We had two thousand pounds. It was made out of a part of Noah's Ark. I'm pretty sure it was three cubits long by two cubits high. Bible people know know what I'm talking about there. Yeah. And then we had, a, a, in the middle of it, was a 12-inch screen that was... Then we had the 8-inch black and white TV that we would put on top of the console TV that actually worked. That was... The, yeah. As long as you held on to the bunny ears on one leg, and a piece of tinfoil in your teeth, and... Uh, and it would kind of work. That was our video game when we were kids, right? The uh, the joystick was the horizontal hold button on the side. Those were the days. Heck, we didn't know what seatbelts were for most of our life, did we? No, heck no, no. Dad knew what it was, though. A sign of weakness. Was... Dad's idea of seatbelt safety was, hey, Jimmy, tuck that thing between the cushions back there before you sit on it and hurt yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We had that big station wagon, right? 1977 Caprice Classic with the woody panel. Had an ashtray that was made out of a kilt with beanbag on it to prevent it from falling off the dashboard there. Those were the days. We didn't have a child safety seat. Child safety seat was the hump on the back floorboard when you shared with your three siblings. No buckling up 
in a McGowan household. How can I hand my dad another patch blue ribbon if I'm buckled up back there? There's... Inefficient is what that is. Then we had the seat in the very far back that would flip up and face the oncoming drunk drivers. That would... I didn't care though. Uh, I was stoned. <laughs> Not from drugs, no, no, from the regular leaded gasoline fumes coming in through the back window. Dad be like, yeah, sniff up, Jimmy. You gotta go home and lick the lead paint on your wall later. <laughs> By the time I'm 14, I'm pooping out lead pencils. And that is where they came up with the number two pencil. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for coming out tonight, everybody. It's going to be a fun night. Go to Sharp. Give me go for Jimmy. Jim, what city do you live in? Livonia. Livonia, huh? This town needs to build a wall.